Let's see, I'm billed here as talking about what really happened in Ohio. Uh, I have to, let me just say, I have to be careful because the Attorney General uh, wants to sanction me. Uh, and uh, whatever I say could be used against me. They stole the election. Let me try to put this in some perspective, uh, because I, I believe that people in this country, not obviously out here on the West Coast or the Left Coast, but many people still in the heartland are politically socialized, inoculated in many ways to the realities of what's been going on in the world, is that, uh, first of all, you have the son of the former CIA director who for decades stole elections throughout the third world in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and it's documented in the public record. They overthrew the government uh, of Iran, the popular Mossadegh government. They overthrew the democratic government of Guatemala in 1954. They overthrew Allende in 1973. They overthrew the Greek government and installed a military junta in 1967. They overthrew and caused the collapse of the labor peace government in Australia in the 1970s. They used mainframe computer tapes. You can see this in Hedrick Smith, the power game the president to attempt to keep Marcos in power when Aquino rose up against him in a popular revolution. They used com uh, mainframe computers to bring Indira to power over Noriega, their former man in Panama. So there's been a long ongoing practice of the U.S. subverting democracies throughout the world. Many of these people uh, ended up being cut from the CIA in the late 70s. Uh, when Stansfield Turner took over, and they went into the campaign of George Herbert Walker Bush, the current president's father. And since that time, a lot of other things happened, like Iran-Contra. And what began to happen in Ohio, in, in February, I wrote an article called uh, Devote E-Voting in the Vast Right-Wing Conspiracy. The man who leaked that information to me, Ethan Gibbs, was dead one week after the article appeared in the free press and in Mother Jones. He was run off the road. He was hit by a truck. Uh, but he said, take a look at the money. This money can be traced back to the leading Christian uh, constructionalist in America. That is Howard Amundsen, also a funder of Iran-Contra. Two brothers, the Savage brothers, uh, are the software people that count about half the votes in the U.S. One works at Debolt, one works at ENS. So within that framework, running up to the Ohio election, I was very skeptical. I was skeptical in March of that year when J. Kenneth Blackwell, the so-called Secretary of State, but really the co-chair of the Bush-Cheney re-election committee, that Mr. Blackwell had come up with two-way communication. For the first time, all 88 counties would be linked directly to the Secretary of State's office for two-way transmission of data. I was skeptical when throughout Ohio, a small family-owned uh, company, Triad, which had had ties to both the billionaire Carl Lidner of United Brand and Chiquita Bananas, and prior to that, uh, to Marvin Warner, uh, who had helped cause the SNL collapse in Ohio. I was very skeptical when they would count the vote in 41 counties. I was also equally skeptical and somewhat afraid because the chair of the Ohio Democratic Party had been a lifelong Republican, Denny White, and had direct ties to the Teamster reputed mobsters out of Cleveland, and that the guy in charge of the Franklin County Party had been an expunged felon and money launderer. So I thought in many ways it would be a perfect place to steal an election. J. Kenneth Blackwell attempted to make sure that he didn't have to do that. Beginning in 2001 through 2004, he canceled 105,000, 105,000 uh, registered voters in the Hamilton County area under a law that says you may cancel anyone's voting rights if they hadn't voted in the last two federal elections, 2002, 2004. You don't have to, but you may. Then, of course, 34,000 former felons 
were essentially disenfranchised by Mr. Blackwell. In Franklin County, where only 100 to 200 felons every year lose their right to vote, that Mr. Blackwell directed Matt Damschroder, the Franklin County election director and former head of the Franklin County Republican Party, to cancel the vote of 3,500 felons dating back to 1998, including people that had been charged with a felony but convicted only of a misdemeanor. Of course, you all recall here that he also found an archaic law saying that no one could register to vote unless it was on 80 bond paperweight, essentially yellow, thick cardstock, even though his office issued 60 pound paperweight. Uh, thousands of people had the registration return. Uh, at the time, there were 300,000 voters. 250,000 of them were in overwhelmingly Democratic districts. So running up to the election, and you may recall, the night before the election, the Sixth Circuit uh, decided that it was, in fact, okay to reverse decades of Ohio practices and, in fact, make sure that you could only cast a vote if you were in the right precinct. Now, this is difficult when you talk about the right precinct. Since the Republicans have been in power, they've been closing inner city precinct after inner city precinct. I used to vote one block west of my house. I didn't allow it, sir. I don't know. And I don't, I'm not sure. Years. Yeah. Well, you know, I fought them tooth and nail. I didn't see you in Columbus. You're welcome to come there and fight with me. You all are. So, you know, I, I would say go online and check my record. I fought these t people tooth and nail, and I'm under sanctions from the Attorney General's office. They're trying to suspend my law license and find me personally. So I fought them. I fought them as an independent. I fought them as a green. They purged me from the party. And I'm still fighting them today with all these people here. And instead of focusing on that, we need to focus on how we're going to take back this country and we're not going to let this fraud stand. So. So it was within this setting that J. Kenneth Blackwell and his crew decided that you could only vote in your precinct. They closed the precincts. And then the mighty Texas strike force showed up, friends of Karl Rove. And we caught them. Uh, there's actually a police report directing people to the wrong precincts, calling up people saying, if you show up and vote, you will go to jail. You are on probation. You owe parking tickets. You owe traffic tickets. They dispersed throughout the state of Ohio, attempting to intimidate voters, this so-called mighty Texas strike force, a dirty trick squad that is linked directly to the White House, a destabilization operation. Now, in Ohio, you don't even know what precinct you're assigned to because it's not rational. You could have a precinct. I have a precinct less than four houses away, but I vote nearly one mile away. You don't vote at your neighborhood precinct. You vote at the precinct to which Kenneth Blackwell has assigned you. And Kenneth Blackwell, an incredibly ambitious man who wants to be governor of Ohio. And again, I, I should be fair to Kenneth Blackwell, as I like to say, he's a man of principle. I knew him when he was a reformed liberal Democrat. He was very principled, as he was when he was a moderate Democrat and a conservative Democrat and an independent and a moderate Republican and a conservative Republican. And now that he's the leading right-wing reactionary force in the state of Ohio, he clings to that principle of opportunism and ambition in search of position. Again, let me, let me just say that I have to be cautious uh, uh, what I say about J. Kenneth Blackwell. I could be sanctioned here. I believe J. Kenneth Blackwell uh, in, has in, essentially engaged in organized crime. I think he should be prosecuted under the RICO Act. I believe he is a criminal that he stole this election. And here's what happened on Election Day. Let me tell you what happened on Election Day. I was the election protection uh, lawyer for eight inner city precincts. I showed up on Election Day and found lines out the door. I also found, in many cases, less machines than were there in the primary. 
precincts that had five machines in the primary or four machines in a lightly contested primary, the election was already over, had three machines. In some cases, two and a half machines. People were out the door. Oddly, they forgot to put 76 machines out. Although I now have a piece of paper with the assigned machines and a black pen, as if somebody took a black pen and marked out the machines and they stayed in the warehouse. Thus, they conducted an election. They needed 5,000 machines. They conducted it with 2,866, and they kept 76 in the warehouse, of which all 76 were in the democratic-rich city of Columbus, and 42 were in the African-American communities that voted more than 80 percent for John Kerry. Now, they tell me, they tell me that was an accident. It just so happens. I have a Ph.D. in statistics. When every single error and accident falls on behalf of the president, when the Franklin County Board of Elections says we don't have enough machines, we'd like to have backup provisional ballots uh, like we used to vote provisionally punch cards, and they were told no by J. Kenneth Blackwell. That is not a mistake or an accident. That is deliberate criminal voter suppression. It is racism. It is an act of state repression against the African-American community, and it cannot and will not stand. This election was illegitimate. It was fraud. The exit polls are correct. It must not stand. Future historians will, in fact, record that this weekend on the West Coast, a new voters' right movement rose up and rolled back this corruption and took back the vote for the people took it back against these private, secret, partisan corporations that are stealing these elections. All power to the people.